In this video, I'm going to look at the Midnight Mule FPL League, who's got the highest score, who's currently top. I'm going to look at the Content Creators League, where I'd appear in that. I'm going to look at what I did for Game Week 14 and my current plans for Game Week 15 and what I've done already. Hopefully some of this will be of interest to some of you and may help you with some of your decisions. Who knows? So let's have a look. By the way, I'm Midnight Mule. <laughs> Forgot to say that. There should be a link below to the Midnight Mule FPL League if you're interested in joining, if you've not already. The top scorer for the week we've just had is, I'm guessing it said Your Dad, by Mohamed Ladoudi. I might have got that name wrong, who scored a massive 90 points. So let's see how they managed that 90 pointer. Here's their team, and they played the bench boost. So the big players on here, let's see. Uh, Trippier got 11, De Bruyne got 11, Jesus 9, Eriksen 8, Ramsdale 6, Akanji 6, Sanchez 5, Trossard 7, Captain Mosala. The seven doubled to 14. So that's a pretty good score. What was on the bench? So there was 17 on the bench. So pretty much just about justifies a bench boost, I'd say. And they made a lot of transfers. What's that? They made seven transfers for a cost of 24. And in this one week, they were eight points worse off. That is to say, had they made no transfers, they would have got 98 points. But maybe over the next couple of weeks, the points will come back and it'll make a difference there. Current top of the league is still Jacob Eriksson with, and I'm still going to torture this name, Skogsklanton IF. There we go. Currently on 877 points. Here's his team. Elmron got 12. Trippier got 11. Edison got 9. Salah was captain, so that returns 14 points. And on the bench, Haaland, of course, vice captain, never got used. Williams 1, Greenwood 0, Ward 3. So looks like the right team got picked there. So well done for doing that. Transfers, one transfer, Fabianski out, Edison in, and that was a plus eight point move. Very interesting to get Edison in. I have Edison, but I wouldn't buy him because it stops you having three outfield Manchester City players. So it's been very bad for me having Edison because I can't get Foden or De Bruyne room because I have Edison, Cancelo and Haaland. But it was a good move. It got you an extra eight points. And I'm not intending to sell Edison with just two game weeks left. But I probably will sell him for game week 17. As for me, you'll see me there still on 26 with a grey arrow. Lots of reds around me. So I guess that's good relative to other people. 65 points currently on 775. So this was my team. I also captained Salah, Trippier 11, Martinelli 8. I brought in Rashford for 8. Darwin 2, Cancelo 6, Edison 9. So that was my team. Nothing special on my bench. Ward 3, Harlan 0, Smith 5, Bueno 2. So Smith got an assist. And I think that's his first assist. His first, yeah, that's his first assist of the season. I made two transfers. And I'll look at the cost of this later. So Solanke and Bowen out for Darwin and Rashford. And that was worth an extra two points, that move. So that's all right so far. But we need to see the next two weeks whether it was totally worth it or not. So I got 65 points, but I spent four on a transfer, so it was a net of 61 points. My game week rank was just inside the 4 million. And then overall, I'm just inside the 1.5 million mark, which is absolutely fine for this time of year. The ranks are all very, very close. Three red arrows in the last five games for me. Again, 1.5 million is fine. There's no problem there. So if we look here... I'm 15 points from being at 1 million and 15 points from being at 2 million. If I go 63 points backwards, I'll be at 4 million. But only 69.4 takes me to 100k. So it's all very, very crunched up. On the Content Creators League, and this is held by FPL Game Week, top of that is Ross at the moment, FPL Raptor, on 896. Someone else who we also watch, so he still gets a mention in the top five, is Harry. He's, um, what's that, 31 points behind... Ross at the moment. I'm not in this league, but when you go to look at it, you'll be placed in it to show where you would be. I would be down at 50th, which is two points behind Holly Shand. You may have, you may see her online. She's very popular. And I'm seven points behind Andy, probably the most popular YouTuber who does the FPL content. And I'm 10 points behind Az from FPL Scout and Black Box. If you go to the next page, then I am still... Four points above Bruno and five points above FPL mate, who's having quite a bad uh, season so far. But it, like I said, it's all very, very close. One one good week with one player doing something exceptional and all these change about. So it's very, very early days yet. 
This is to remind me to say, if you like this sort of thing, please make sure you're subscribed. It's very much uh, appreciated. To get in the Content Creators League officially, I think I need like 10,000 subscribers. So we've only got 9,774 to go. So another 20 years, I might be in the league for real. So that'd be nice. Uh, and the last video like this, I uh, got 20 likes out of 294 potential views. So if you like this sort of thing or you don't hate it, a like would be nice. And comments are good as well. Thanks. So transfers. What I like to do with transfers, I'm fine taking hits, but I like to see, looking back the way, were they good or bad? And I like to give myself four weeks generally to work out if they were worth it. So back in game week 12, I got rid of Madison and Vardy and brought in Salah and Solanke. And in the first week, Salah and Solanke got five against the Leicester boys who got two. The next week, the two Leicester boys got 18 and the toy brought in only got three. Game week just gone, it was four and seven. But I've actually sold Solanke now, so I no longer get his points. So at the moment, this was clearly a very bad transfer. The players I took out have so far got 24 points. The ones I got in got 15 points. So at the moment, I'm negative 13 for doing this transfer. So bad news. That was one of the worst transfers I've probably made. <laughs> But bringing Vardy in initially, that was also a bad transfer. So I guess I might avoid Vardy for the rest of the season. Game week 14, I also took a four-point hit. I sold Burn and Solanke and I brought in Rashford and Darwin. So this is the game week just gone. And as you would have seen earlier, I'm currently up six points on the actual, what the players scored. But I took a four-point hit, so I'm currently up on two. And we can only go by the next two game weeks. Obviously, I won't count game week 17 because in the World Cup, we get to change as many as we like. So hopefully in the next two weeks, this will still prove to be a good transfer for me. So this is how my team's lining up currently for game week 15. Have Edison in goal, home to Fulham. Dunk away to Wolves. Wolves having trouble scoring just now, so there's a chance Dunk could get a clean sheet, possibly may get an assist. Cancelo's at home to Fulham. Trippier's away to Southampton. Everyone and their dog owns Trippier. So it's really irrelevant what Trippier does, but I have to have him in my team in case he has a good week. If I've not got him, I'll obviously fall in the ranks quite a lot. I've got Rashford away to Villa. I brought him in last week and I can see more and more people online are now talking about getting Rashford in. So I'm glad I got him when he was a little bit cheaper than some people would be getting him. Currently got Zaha away to West Ham. Very tempted to swap him out though. Uh, Salah away to Spurs. Martinelli away to Chelsea, Darwin away to Spurs, Haaland at home to Fulham, might not be playing, they may be injured. And I brought in Wilson, so I sold Mitrovic and brought in Wilson. And I did that before the prices changed. So I've already done one transfer. I'm currently very tempted to sell Zaha and get in Trossard, just because I think Trossard is such an excellent player. And I think he could it's quite feasible he's going to get four points more than Zaha in the next two weeks. The thing that's holding me back at the moment, and I may jump before the deadline anyway, is we don't know what's happening with Haaland. If Haaland's not playing, if he's out for one week or two weeks and we get to hear about it before the deadline, that may affect what I do. For example, I could sell Haaland and get in De Bruyne, in which case I'd probably get a cheap striker and then it'd be De Bruyne instead of Zaha. Or maybe I'd keep Haaland, but then sell Zaha and on the bench I've got Billing to bring in Elmeron and Trossard. And then Haaland's just on my bench. So I'd like to leave that as late as possible. However, Trossard may go up in value tonight, possibly. Zaha may go down again. So I may be forced to move a bit earlier. So I don't know what I'm doing yet for this week, but I will post it on my Twitter account. For anyone who follows me there, you'll get to see what I'm doing and then have a giggle when I get it wrong. And there we have it. That's how I did in week 14. What my plans are for game week 15, very much up in the air. It'd be very nice to get some news on Haaland and what he's doing. And then I could know what I'm going to do. But I don't suppose Pep's going to tell me. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.